so much. Well, thank you guys again for having me back here. I love DLD um, and I love seeing all my friends here. So thank you to uh, Steffi, to Alessia, to Melissa um, for, for having me. Um, so what I'm going to take everybody through today is our deep dive into trust in technology um, and specifically looking at um, why people trust tech, why they don't, and what technology companies can do in order to improve trust. So first, as Melissa said, Edelman has actually studied trust for over 20 years. Um, actually, next week we're going to be releasing our 23rd Edelman Trust Barometer, which is a deep dive into trust in business government, media, and NGOs. And I actually have a little bit of a preview of some of that data actually to share with you guys today. Um, but before I actually dig into the data um, that I'm gonna talk about around our deep dive into trust in tech, I specifically just wanna talk a little bit about what trust is and why trust is important. Um, so as you can see here, what we define trust as, it's about purpose, integrity, dependability, and ability. And why does it matter? Because if you're a trusted brand, you get greater consideration you're more resilient, you're, people are more likely to purchase your products, and you get more loyalty. So as you can see, trust is actually an incredibly important tool um, for a company. So this past fall, we did a deep dive specifically into trust in the technology sector. There's obviously so much that's happened in tech, all you need to do is open up a newspaper and you can see headlines that are all about the tech sector, that we really wanted to understand what is that impact on trust and technology around the world. So we did a survey of 15 markets, both in the developing and developed world. You can see the markets we did right here. 1,000 respondents per market, so 15,000 respondents total. Came back with some really interesting data. So we actually found four forces putting pressure on trust in tech. First is that the definition of technology has expanded. It's no longer just hardware and software. Technology today is social media. It means digital applications and social media. That's a huge part of what trust about what technology means today. Tech is also actually impacted by political polarization, whether it's uh, domestic politics, whether it's nationalist currents. Um, tech is absolutely impacted uh, by politics, and that's a big factor on trust in tech as well. Um, trust in tech is actually split across geographies. So in the developed world, trust in tech has actually declined. And we'll get into that data in a little bit. There's skepticism around what technology means for people and for their lives. Whereas in the developing world, there's still a lot of hope and promise around what innovation and technology can mean for people. And then lastly, there's a perceived lack of societal leadership on core issues like ch climate and worker retraining, both for technology companies and technology CEOs. We're going to get into that a little bit more later as well. We also found that people believe technology can be a force for good. Technology is not all bad. It's actually a lot of hope and promise that it can solve the societal issues of our time. And then there are key actions tech companies should take to bolster their reputation and in continue to enhance trust. So we'll get into some of those at the end. So our data from October 22 uh, shows that technology remains the most trusted sector. As you can see here, tech is ahead of food and beverage, healthcare, manufacturing, definitely above financial services. Um, all the way down at the end, though, is trust in social media, which as we'll see is very important because when people define technology as social media, trust in tech declines. So now we'll see a preview of our 2023 data, which actually comes out next week um, from the trust barometer. So what we can see here is that technology has pretty much been flat over the last decade. However, we can see also that in the developed world, trust in tech over the last decade has declined. So the US, Japan, UK, France, all have seen pretty significant declines over the last decade from 2020, 2013 to 2023. In the developing world though, India, China, the UAE, trust in technology has gone up, perhaps contributing to why tech has remained essentially flat or down one point over the last decade. So why does this matter? When trust is low, that impacts technology adoption. So as you can see from the numbers here, in the developed world, only 10% say they want to be the first to actually adopt new technologies. In the developing world, that number is 33%. So when you have trust, it means that people are more likely to want to try your technology 
When there's mistrust, it means it's going to be a lot harder, which of course then impacts technology companies' businesses. So now let's get into the data that shows why trust in tech is declining, in particular in the developed world. First, again, back to social media. When people associate technology with social media, trust in tech declines. When they associate it with uh, social media, it actually goes down by four points. When they associate it just with hardware and software, it goes up by 10 points. So technology, when they see it just as sort of the things that enable your day-to-day -day life, that's a force for good. When it's social media, that's when trust starts declining. People also just don't necessarily trust governments or platforms to regulate technology. What's interesting here is the organizations that are supposed to be the watchdogs of the industry are no longer trusted or perceived as competent in regulating the industry. So as you can see here, it says that 56% of people say government regulators don't actually understand emerging technologies enough in order to regulate them. That's a pretty powerful statistic. And then over half say they don't trust platforms to regulate online content. So again, the things that are supposed to be regulating tech, people no longer trust them to do this. People also don't trust technology companies headquartered in foreign countries. And this is particularly true in the developed world. 14 of the 15 countries we surveyed, people trust domestic headquartered technology companies significantly more than foreign headquartered companies. And as you can see, for example, look at the stat for Germany. 60% uh, trust uh, technology companies headquartered in Germany, and then only 34 trust technology companies headquartered outside. That same thing for the US. 65% trust technology companies headquartered in the US. Only 39 say they trust it outside of the US. This trend remains for the developing world as well. However, the numbers are just higher on both sides. For mistrusters, there are concerns around data not the product. So the biggest issues for people why they distrust companies in foreign markets, they don't trust their government, they don't trust their data protection laws, and they worry the government might use the data against us. So it's not about the product, it's not about the company's ability to innovate, it's all around fears around foreign governments and their use of data. There's also continued fear of misinformation and deep fakes. So people worry about false information or fake news being used as a weapon. They also worry that technology is going to make it hard to know what's real and what's not. So again, this is a very clear signal that this epidemic of misinformation, it's not over and people are still worried about it. People are also worried that technology could lead to job loss and actually worsen income inequality. So as you can see here, over half the people worry that AI can do their jobs better than they can. Pretty scary stat. Um, and then also 60% of people worry that when technology replaces human workers, it's going to increase income inequality. So people are really worried about the societal impact of technology. In addition, there's distrust of emerging technologies, in particular in developed markets. So while technology trust stands at 76 points, when you start looking at other areas like autonomous technology, blockchain, cryptocurrency, uh, Web3, those numbers significantly fall into the 30s and 40s in the developed world. In the developing world, they remain much higher. So it's very interesting if you're a technology company and you're looking to introduce new tech and emerging technologies, maybe you're better off doing it outside of the US, outside of Europe, because that's where you're going to potentially have faster and easier adoption. But however, I know I've given you guys a lot of negative data points. I'm going to switch now and talk about reasons that technology can actually be a force for good. So the majority of people are actually convinced that technology can solve urgent societal challenges. This includes access to healthcare, economic competitiveness, what good paying jobs, access to information, importantly climate change. People really believe that technology can solve these major societal issues. This is a, a big, big thing that people believe that technology can do this. And employees across sectors agree that technology makes work better. As you can see the stats here, tech has had an overall positive impact on the workplace and it frees people to do more meaningful work. So to build trust, what do technology companies need to do? They are expected to do more. In what ways? First, to do more around climate change and labor practices. Um, only four out of 10 say technology companies are doing what they can to reduce the impact of climate change. And only four out of 10 say suppliers have fair labor practices and protect the environment. 
Climate change, the environment, that is a huge issue of our time, and it's clear that technology companies are not perceived as doing enough. This is a big opportunity for tech companies. Also, people want companies to train workers that are displaced. 68% say tech companies should be contributing resources to retrain workers that were displaced by their technology. This is particularly true, interestingly, in the developing world, where perhaps anxiety about being replaced uh, by new technologies is even greater. But it's also true as well in the developed world. They want tech companies to pay their fair share of taxes. Only about four in 10 say tech companies are paying their fair share of taxes. And in the US and Germany, look, 26% in the US say they are, and 27% in Germany. So tech companies, pay your fair share of taxes. They also want tech companies to educate on the benefits and downsides of technology. It's not just enough to talk about all the things that tech is doing well. You also need to talk about what are the issues around the technology, and also provide a vision for the future that allows people to see themselves in it. It's not just enough to say, hey, here's this technology, here's what it does. Allow people to understand how it's going to impact their lives in a positive way. And finally, tech CEOs need to show empathy and leadership. So as we can see here from the stats, only 56% say tech companies are actually led by people who genuinely care about the welfare of people and society. And only, you know, actually fewer than four out of 10 say they're doing well to use their power to benefit society as a whole. So again, really clearly showing that people don't feel the empathy coming from tech CEOs. They don't feel that tech CEOs care or are doing enough. This is a big, big opportunity. And again, this is true both in the developing and developed world. So, in conclusion, the tech sector needs a new map. It needs a new path forward in order to build trust. And we found four core ways that technology companies can continue to do this. Uh, first, they need to broadcast integrity through action. What do I mean there? It means that technology CEOs need to think about all stakeholders when they are thinking about their business, including their employees, of course, including their shareholders, the communities in which they operate. And they also need to take the lead on key issues of our time, like climate change, like worker retraining. This is an opportunity, a significant opportunity for technology CEOs. Also, tech companies need to take on, as I said, what are the biggest challenges of our time? Again, it's not enough for technology companies to make great products. It's not enough for them to be innovative. People actually want technology companies to take the lead on areas like misinformation, like worker retraining, like areas around climate. These are all sort of areas that are ripe for technology companies to take the lead on. They really need to lead on these societal issues. Next, technology companies need to communicate a vision that people can opt into. So the important thing here, um, again, is that it's not about just talking about the product, it's about offering a vision for the future of what, that, of what your product looks like in society, how that product is changing society, and how people can benefit from it. Again, incredibly important. And finally, it's to fill the policy vacuum. As we talked about earlier, people don't actually trust government to regulate technologies, and this is where there's a clear opportunity for tech companies. Tech companies can partner with governments, they can partner with policymakers to make sure that the data policies are seen as fair, transparent, um, accurate. So this, again, is a really big opportunity for technology companies, and this is both domestically and internationally um, as well. So in conclusion, this is what technology companies really need to do today to build trust and to lean into the positive aspects um, around uh, tech as a force for good in society. Uh, so thank you. That's it. Thank you guys all for the time. I hope you learned a little bit. And uh, please look out for the trust barometer coming out uh, next week uh, to coincide with Davos. Thank you guys.